Hi, this is Josh Blackman. I am the president of the Harlan Institute, and I am pleased to welcome you to the Harlan Institute Consource Virtual Supreme Court Competition. Uh, this year, we are considering the case of Trinity Lutheran Church versus Pauli. We are in the semifinal rounds, and this is the second match of the, of the semifinal round. We have here a team from Creekview uh, a High School in Texas. We have uh, uh, Kate Smitherman, and we have Joanna Boyer. Thank you very much. And from Elkins High School in West Virginia, we have Riley Tribble and John Friganera. Thank you both for participating. And the format for today will be that petitioner receives 15 minutes, respondent receives 15 minutes, then the petitioner gets five minutes rebuttal time, and the respondent gets five minutes rebuttal time. Uh, my, my colleague, Julie Silverbrook, will be asking questions along me uh, uh, together. Uh, Julie, anything you'd like to say before we get started? Yeah, I just want to wish uh, both of our uh, part both of our teams uh, the best of luck, and uh, we are hoping that uh, you will be able to join us for the final round in Philadelphia. So, with that, good luck, and I'll let you get started. And I'll warn all of you: in the event that the internet connection drops out, which does happen from time to time, I'll simply pause. We'll we'll pause it. You'll come back in, and we'll resume your time. So, in the event the signal drops, don't worry about it. So, uh, uh, Creekview, please unmute your microphone. You're on mute right now. Okay, very good. And I'll count 15 minutes whenever you're ready. You may proceed whenever you want. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. My name is Joanna Boyer, and along with my co-counsel, Kate Smitherman, I represent the petitioner, Trinity Lutheran, in today's case. Would the court benefit from a brief recitation of the facts? Yes. Please. In 1985, Trinity Lutheran Church merged with a nonprofit organization called the Learning Center, a daycare and preschool with an open application policy. The Department of Natural Resources, or DNR, offers playground tire scrap surface material grants that provide funds to qualifying organizations to resurface their playgrounds in an effort to keep tires from Missouri landfills and um, foster children safe. Trinity Lutheran Church applied for said grant for their learning center because the hard, jagged edges of their gravel surfacing poses a safety risk to their students and the children of the community. When considered secularly, the application was ranked fifth out of 44 due to, the fact of, due to the fact that the community surrounding Trinity Lutheran was below the poverty level. However, the application was denied because the grant board refused to give funds to religious organizations, citing Article 1, Section 7 of the Missouri Constitution to justify its refusal. Your Honor, today I will address how the DNR violates the Establishment Clause by refusing to give the Learning Center the tire scrap grant on the sole basis of religion, and that giving the grant would not violate the Establishment Clause by arguing that one, the refusal violates the Establishment Clause under the Lemon Test, two, the act of denying the grant goes against the neutral standard that is, that is a constant when dealing with Establishment Clause rulings, and three, the state has no valid establishment clause concern under the coercion test. The Council, establishment clause of I'm the first- I'm sorry to interrupt you so early. I, I'm, I just have some difficulty with this. You're arguing on one hand that this violates the establishment clause, but on the other hand, that it doesn't. That's confusing to me. What, what, do, you, what do you mean by that? Um, to clear up my point, Your Honor, I I'm arguing that the Department of Natural Resources refusal to give Trinity Lutheran the grant violates the Establishment Clause, and I'm arguing that should de the Department of Natural Resources um, give the grant, that would not violate the Establishment Clause. Okay, I'll let you explain what you mean by that. Thank you, Your Honor. The Establishment Clause uh, of the First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of a religion. This clause not only forbids the government from establishing an official religion, but it also for prohibits government from unduly favoring one religion over another or religion over non-religion, as well as non-religion over religion. The Lemon Test, created in Lemon v. Kurtzman, provides three elements to weigh and consider when determining whether a law violates the Establishment Clause. One, the law must have a 
secular legislative purpose. Two, it must not have the primary effect of either advancing or inhibiting religion. And three, it must not result in an excessive entanglement of government and religion. To address the first prong of the law must have a secular legislative purpose. Black's Law's Dictionary defines secular as not spiritual. Therefore, a law that has a secular purpose does not regard religious or spiritual affiliations, but rather views all organizations on its secular value. By putting an addendum that expressly states that religious organizations and organizations with religious ties are banned from receiving grant merely because of their ties to religion, removes any trace of secular purpose from the grant's purpose and instead allows the DNR to discriminate against a religion. That discrimination Counsel makes Counselor, if, if, I, if I can interject for, for, for a moment, um, is there any actual religious instruction that goes on during, um, is there any actual religious instruction that goes on during these uh, playground exercises? Are there prayers being said? Are, are teachers engaging in some sort of religious uh, motivation? I mean, what, what, what do we have going on here? Is there any actual religious practice going on? Your Honor, we contend that the playground merely provides a place for the Trinity Lutheran students, as well as the children of the community, a place to play. And should Trinity Lutheran be granted the grant application, they would be they would then have a safe place to play. And, and counselor, I agree, it's safe. We don't we don't want kids cracking their skulls open. Uh, but but imagine that you're a parent and you're considering sending your kid to one school or the other. And one school has this really safe playground that's religious school, and another school doesn't have this playground, right? and they choose a school with a safe playground. Wouldn't that, the state, be then conferring a benefit on the religious institution, the fact that now parents are choosing to send their kids there and they'll get more money, and there's some sort of an endorsement going on. Do you, do you, do you see the issue there? Uh, Your Honor, the, the school that is, uh, the non-religious school has the opportunities to send in a grant application just as Trinity Lutheran and have their need considered and applied just as Trinity Lutheran. And really capable of purchasing the tire scrap grants should they feel like their playground is unsafe. Okay, you may proceed with your, with your line of questioning. Thank you, Your Honor. The second prong of the Lemon Test examines whether a state's primary action would be to uh, primary actions effect would be to advance or inhibit a religion. Justice O'Connor opined in Lynch versus Donnelly that the proper inquiry under the purpose prong of Lemon is whether the government intends to convey a message of endorsement or disapproval of religion. Santa Fe Independent School District versus Doe held that the message of state endorsement must be clear from an objective observer. Allowing the Learning Center to receive the tire grant would not have the primary effect of advancing religion, nor would it convey a message of endorsement by the government, because this is not a situation in which the government is providing material that is being used to teach religion or aid in the student's understanding of religion. Rather, a daycare would be given scrap tire materials so that all children may benefit from a safer playground surface. The mere fact that the school integrates some daily religious instruction into its program does not indicate that awarding the school the grant would aid the religious instruction in any way. The grant has des designated its purpose to be used in playgrounds, and the materials are limited to use in that. Therefore, the Learning Center has no agency to use the grant in a way that would appear to be the government aiding or endorsing religion to an objective observer. However, the DNR's refusal to the grant on the basis that it would be going to a preschool managed by a church would be discrimination equating to the disapproval of, a, of religion, expressly forbidden by precedent and the Establishment Clause itself. By disqualifying religious organizations from receiving the grant, the DNR is effectively placing secular organizations above organizations with re religious affiliation and unconstitutionally punishing the Learning Center for its affiliation with Trinity Lutheran Church. Counselor, can I interrupt you for a second? Can you explain to me the difference between the Establishment Clause and the Free Exercise Clause? Uh, Your Honor, the Establishment Clause, as previously stated, states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of a religion, while the Free Exercise Clause uh, pertains to the fact that uh, Congress and the state cannot 
infringe upon a church or religion's ability to exercise their religion. Okay, so now are you arguing that this is violating the free exercise clause um, by discriminating on the basis of religion? Uh, no, Your Honor, we are arguing that it is violating, that um, it is violating the establishment clause because with, um, through the establishment clause interpretation, you can see that um, the establishment clause prohibits governments from preferring non-religion over religion. Explain that to me. Because doesn't, uh, get, doesn't the government give funding to lots of secular non-religious institutions? Wouldn't under that theory, all of those programs also violate your interpretation of the establishment clause? I'm not sure I understand your question, Your Honor. Explain to me your establishment. I, I, I'm having a, a really difficult time with your establishment clause argument with respect to the decision of the government not to give money to a religious institution. How is that a violation of the establishment clause? Uh, because, Your Honor, the as held in uh, university. Let me ask you. An, let me ask you another. Let me ask you a, a question in, in a different way. Um, if the state government gives money uh, to uh, only secular, only uh, public schools with no religious affiliation, okay, does not give those funds to religious schools, does that violate the establishment clause the way that you're interpreting it? Yes, Your Honor, because that would that would allow that would be putting the DNR and allowing them to choose non-religion over religion, which, which violates the establishment. And, and, where, and tell me um, where you get this interpretation of the establishment clause from. Is this based on precedent? Is it based on history? Your Honor, um, it is based on the case Lynch versus Donnelly, which held, um, it's based on the case of Lynch versus Donnelly, uh, which is uh, provides the second prong of the Lemon test that the proper inquiry under the purpose prong of Lemon is whether the government intends to convey a message of endorsement or disapproval of religion, which shows that the establishment clause is violated if uh, there is a message of endorsement or disapproval. Okay, so by not giving money right? You think that that's the government expressing disapproval toward a religious group? And, and, yes, what if, and, and what if when the government says, well, actually, it's the opposite. If I give money to a religious school, that is, uh, in effect, showing preference for a particular religion. Your Honor, that goes to, that goes to the neutrality of the grant because courts have um, shown, have ruled in favor of neutrality time and time again. And Zellman versus Simmons-Harris has to define neutrality as even-handedness in terms of who may receive aid, which so, shows that... So, sorry, Counselor, let me just ask you. So if the government gives these funds on equal basis, you know, developing criteria for merit to a, a school that is maintained by a church, a school that is maintained by a synagogue, a school that's maintained by a mosque, and a school that is maintained by a secular entity, then that would be fine according to your interpretation of the Establishment Clause. But if it were to refuse yes. one of those uh, institutions' money, that would be a violation of the Establishment Clause. To refuse the to refuse those organizations solely on the basis of religion would violate the establishment clause your honor. okay i'm going to let you continue with your argument thank you your honor everson versus board of education held that states cannot exclude members of any faith because of their faith or lack of it from receiving public benefits following that precedent this court should avoid putting secular organizations above non-secular organizations and find that giving the grant for both the use of the learning center and the public does not violate the clause. The third prong of the lemon test is that a law must not result in an excessive entanglement between government and religion. Counselor, and if, let, let, counselor if, I, if I can interject right there, let's talk about the third prong of lemon. 
and this notion of excessive entanglement. Isn't there inherently an excessive entanglement if the state now needs to decide which playgrounds are religious, which playgrounds are not religious, and maybe they're saying the Lord's Prayer on the slide, I don't know, right? Isn't there a risk that the state will have to do a lot more heavy lifting to deal with this? Wouldn't a better rule simply be we don't give it to any religions, period, and then the rubber chips go to uh, secular schools? Wouldn't that be a better rule? And you have a minute and a half left. Uh, Your Honor, that ruling would show that would be the discrimination against religion. And Tilton versus Richardson upheld one-time grants to secretary and institutions because ongoing supervision was not required. In this case, it is a one-time grant and ongoing supervision would not be required. In Widmar v. Vincent, the university, like the DNR in this case, attempted to justify its exclusion of religious group by uh, arguing that it was avoiding a federal establishment clause violation and that it was attempting to achieve the greater degree of separation. But the court rejected both arguments. Okay, you have about 40 seconds left if you'd like to provide a conclusion. Your Honor, the the gr granting the grant in this case would not be violating the establishment clause because playground resurfacing like by police and fire protection, sewage facilities, streets and sidewalks are not in support of religious institution. Wherefore, premises considered, the petitioner respectfully request that this court rule in favor of the Trinity Lutheran Church by overturning the decisions of the court below and ruling that the DNR violated the establishment clause. Thank you very much. With three seconds to spare, right on target. Uh, uh, thank you. So if, Elk, if, sorry, if Elkins, you can unmute your microphone, and if Creek, if you can please mute your microphone. Very good. All right. So uh, Elkins, okay. Uh, can, can you hear us, John and uh, Riley? You hear us okay? Yep. We can hear just fine. Yep. Okay. So whenever you're ready, uh, ready I'll count 15 minutes, and you may begin. Um, let's see. All right. Let's get our notes. Just one second. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're ready whenever you are. Proceed, Counselor. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court to consider um, that the case of Trinity Lutheran Church is um, dealing heavy, heavily with the way that religion interacts with government. And because of this, the First Amendment will be a large part focus of our argument, and the intent of the First Amendment can be found. Uh, by directly referencing the historical documents, such as the religious uh, Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, and uh, so we'll also reference other Supreme Court decisions dealing with the same issue, such as um, Lemon versus Kurtzman, of course, and um, Locke versus Davy. Um, I'd like to say that the uh, Missouri Constitution, Article One, Section Seven, um, which uh, is Congress shall make no law respecting it. Wait, sorry, I'm sorry about that. No money shall be taken from the public treasury directly or indirectly in aid of any church, section, or denomination of religion. And uh, so the uh, Missouri Constitution, that Article 1, Section 7 is uh, non discriminatory and neutral. So, for in, in order to, um, and it actually in, reinforces the First Amendment of the Constitution. So, in, in order for the uh, petitioners to uh, win this case, you have to over, the course today would have to overturn um, the previous uh, federal court cases. So we say uh, the First Amendment prohibits the government from establishing a religion. Congress should make no law respecting an establishment of religion. So the Trinity Lutheran Church applied for a Division of Natural Resources playground scrap tire surface material grant to build a playground, but were denied in their application because 
of the Missouri Constitution, uh, which I cited. And so the, we come back to the the meaning of, of establishment um, and and the history behind uh, the establishment clause. Um, would be. So historically, people left England uh, to America to avoid the religious persecution. Uh, they were some of them were Americans, and at the time, and the time when the country was founded. Uh, uh, sorry, we yeah. Mix up on our so these the people that uh, fled England to uh, avoid religious persecution were the same people that wrote the Declaration yeah, of Counselor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you. Let, let me just ask you a question. Um, giving uh, the, the, uh, the program is, you know, scrap tire for playground surfaces. Explain to me how that violates the Establishment Clause. Um, if, if they, if the, if they would give this grant to the Trinity Lutheran Church, um, it would, kind of, it would favor, uh, this one religion over another, but it would, it, if it favored, I'm sorry. Uh, could you repeat the question? Please? Yeah. So, um, Explain to me your your argument is that this program violates the establishment clause or giving this funding to a a playground affiliated with a religious institution would violate the establishment clause. Explain that argument to me. Do you want to take me? Do you do you want to take me through the lemon test? Yes, uh, sure. Uh, well, it's our apologies there. That's okay. Why don't you so, take us uh, through the lemon test? All right. So the lemon test was born out of uh, the final opinion of Lemon versus Kurtzman, and um, the first statute, which uh, so the first statute is that the it must have a, a secular legislative purpose, and the second is that it's principle or primary effect must be one that uh, doesn't advance or inhibit religion. And the third prong is that it doesn't create an excessive entanglement. And in the I case wanna, of- I want to yeah. pa pause you there. Take me through each one of those prongs and explain to mm -hmm. me how the program, in this case, the grant that would be given to Trinity Lutheran okay. Church would violate the lemon test. Okay. So in- Addressing the uh, first prong, the uh, court's decision will determine whether the Missouri state legislation, Article 1, Section 7, um, is overturned. The common interpretation of the first prong is that test if, is it'll, they'll judge if the religious neutrality or secularism. So if the court were to side with Trinity Lutheran Church, this would, would make this neutral law, which is this blanket um, ban against giving any funding to religion, it would create, make this neutral law overturn. So how could overturning this already secular law to give public funds to a church be secular itself? Uh, so to address the second prong of the limit test, if funding the church's playground is ruled constitutional, this would advance religion. Because the effect of this case is, is that uh, the Trinity Lutheran Church would get this top-notch playground that uh, could result in more children wanting to go to that school, attending that school. And these new children would pay a tuition because it's a private school. Okay. And that would, this increased revenue would the church. Counselor, if I, may, if, my, if I may interject for a moment. Um, do we know in the record if there's any religious activity going on at this playground? Are there any prayers being said? Is, it, is this something that uh, is part of the religious mission? I mean, are people reading the Bible on the seesaw? I mean, do we, is there anything in the record about this? Um, so, well, we don't know on the record if there is any 
and taking over. But to find out that, there would have to maybe send a, some government official or um, create like some kind of system of checking whether there was a religious um, religious things going on there, maybe Ten Commandments or some, some kind of thing there. And that would create an unnecessary and excessive entanglement um, that would would be which addresses the third prong of the limit test um also on that third prong um the entanglement would also lie with the state dnr um having to deal with the church while they're uh, applying for the grant and if they work if the with um the trinity lutheran church um then the future, every future church that would go through the same process would have this same excessive entanglement. And also, uh, everyone would have to, um, every church would have to be made sure there was no uh, religious um, things going on in it, which would be a process Counselor, in itself. Can you me, thank you, Counselor. Can you give me some other examples of cases that would violate the Lemon Test? Um, we could uh, reference Lockbert's Davy for that. Okay, tell oh, me more about that. Um, what is it? Sorry. Tell, explain. Tell me more about the case that you just mentioned. Oh, okay. Um, so the respondent could see uh, in Lockbert's Davy that states have the right to deny financial aid in religious situations um, because. Uh, so there was a, um, see. Joshua Davey uh, received the promise scholarship from the state of Washington, enrolled in a Northwest College. And when he changed his major to include pastoral ministries, uh, they revoked his scholarship. And Davey filed a lawsuit and took it to the Supreme Court. And the court ruled that the state's decision to deny his funding was um, just. Okay. So those are the facts. Take me through why that violates the lemon test. Um, well, uh, because the effect, well, for the second prong, the effect would be that uh, the state was funding something that would promote or that, so, because he would get out of college and he would go work for some church or ministry and so the effect would be uh promoting religion and they also say that the well, the purpose behind uh the law or their purpose behind their um decision to cut to cut his funding was uh secular it, it yeah so that was positive. Yeah. okay you can go ahead and continue with your argument Thank you. Mm, so, as we said, that uh, the Trinity Lutheran Church First Poly is heavily interwoven with the First Amendment. So, an in-depth understanding of the intent behind the First Amendment uh, would be vital in deciding the case. Respondent can see uh, an example of. An established religion in uh, when Henry, King Henry VIII, was forced to create his own religion when the Roman Catholic Church uh, didn't allow him to divorce his wife, which and many founders in the United States came from England at that time. Wanted and so King Henry VIII had a lot of like manipulation of uh, the laws and like establishing a church just for his own personal gain, kind of um, and. They want to prevent any future legislative manipulation as a result of religion. And you can see that they express these ideals in the Declaration of Independence, uh, which it references, it, the Declaration references this fear of government control. It says, we have, this is a quote, uh, we have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislator to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our immigration and settlement here. And so, um, 
the need for complete separation is expressed in the First Amendment of the Constitution, uh, which James Madison was the principal architect of, by Thomas Jefferson's word. And Thomas Jefferson was a, a writer of the Declaration of Independence. And in Jefferson's Virginia Statute for Religious Freedom, he outlines the principle of separation of church and state. In, in this, Jefferson states, that our civil rights have no dependence on our religious opinions any more than our opinions on physical, physics or geometry. So James Madison, who was an architect in the writing of the Establishment Clause itself, um, he grew up where in Virginia, where the Episcopal Church was uh, Episcopal Church was established, um, and so you could tell a lot from what James Madison personally thinks um, through his pamphlet called Memorial and Remonstrance Against Religious Assessments. And so in his response to um, a tax proposed in Virginia, he wrote that uh, we the subscribers say that the General Assembly of this Commonwealth have no such authority. Pamphlet, he says that if we give up our rights to religious freedom, we might as well give up our rights on other things as well. Councilor, if I may interject, you have about a minute left if you'd like to provide a summary and closing statement. Okay. Um, we kind of like to bring that historical intent back to Thomas Jefferson. Um, well, uh, never mind. <laughs> I'm going to just go ahead with a short conclusion. Um, so the case of Trinity Lutheran Church versus Polly uh, deals with how religion interacts with government. And because of this, our this First Amendment is very important. And we look at we looked at how James Madison was influenced by Thomas Jefferson, um, and that the intent of the First Amendment could be is strong. It is referencing historical documents that we reference. Um, other Supreme Court decisions deal with the same issue, like the Lemon versus Gershman and Locke versus Davy. And the First Amendment prohibits the religious government from establishing a religion. So the court should uphold uh, the, the current Missouri Constitution. Uh, Article 1, Section 7 is constitutional. And that what Sarah Pauli did, has done, is a fair application of this Missouri Constitution and is in line with the intent of, of the establishment clause and of the constitution okay thank you thank you so much uh if elkins you guys can please mute your microphones and if a uh, creek you could unmute your microphones and creek you'll have five minutes of rebuttal time whenever you're ready you may proceed may it please the court my name is kate featherman and i will be delivering the rebuttal for the petitioner your Honor, uh, to correct a statement made by my opponent, the issue in this case is not the constitution constitutionality of Article 1, Section 7, but rather the constitutional constitutionality of the law's application under these facts. The sole question is, does funding a playground associated with a church violate the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment, which could overturn the application of this law in the circumstance, but not overturn the law itself? to move on to their uh, analysis of the lemon prong. The DNR broke the first prong of the lemon test because they did not uphold a neutral secular purpose. As dictated in Rosenberger versus Rector, referencing Board of Education versus Grummet, we have held that, guarantee, that the guarantee of neutrality is respected, not offended when the government following neutral criteria and even-handed policies extends benefits to recipients whose viewpoints, including religious ones, are broad and diverse. There is no doubt that, a de that denying a grant solely on the basis of a, an organization's religious affiliation would fly in flagrant violation of the court's requirement of even-handedness and neutrality. To address the state's arguments regarding the second prong of lemon, the petitioners did not contend, do not contend that giving this grant to the church would advance religion. However, even if the grant would have some Sorry. 
even if this grant would have some effect to advance religion, it would not be the primary effect of this law. The primary effect would be to fix the dangerous gravel surface of the playground and provide a playground for the children of the churches surrounding area, especially considering that it was a high poverty area, as stated in the petitioner's reply brief as submitted to the Eighth, Eighth Circuit. The respondent cites no case law to support their claim that a government official would have to travel to the church and scour it for religious references. Romer versus Board held that there is no excessive entanglement where state conducts an annual, annual audits to ensure that categorical state grants to religious colleges are not used to teach religion. The audit is only needed annually because the grant has a very narrow use and does not require a prolonged financial relationship, just as in the case today. Consequently, there would be no excessive government entanglement. The precedential effect of ruling for the petitioner would be to put so, religion counselor, on the same. If, if I can interject, you your 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 friends on the other side mentioned that um, there is indeed an entanglement because it may be necessary to send you know inspectors to the school to see if maybe prayers are being conducted on the seesaw, right? Why 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 do you think that this program could be administered in the absence of this sort of entanglement? Your Honor, just as the government has no interest in regulating whether or not an individual prays uh, in their own time at a public school or on a public sidewalk, the government has no interest in regulating prayer at a preschool long after any benefit has been given or long after any relationship has been severed. But what if, what if and again, you, you, your friends and other side from West Virginia made the point that if a parent is choosing between two schools, one school with this fancy playground and another school without this fancy playground, um, isn't that conferring indeed a benefit ongoing in perpetuity for the religious uh, religious kindergarten? Uh, that could be considered a benefit, Your Honor. However, that would be a benefit to uh, to secular preschools as well. And under the Establishment Clause, looking at the religious value of a place and making a decision to discriminate against them solely on their religious affiliation is against the Establishment Clause. Okay, Counsel, you have about 50 seconds if you'd like to wrap up and give a closing summary. Yes, Your Honor. The Founders never intended for discrimination against religion, similar to the way the Missouri of Natural Resources has used it, to be a uh, to have a, the establishment clause as a means of achieving a legal backdoor for discrimination against religion. Your Honor, Chief Justice, wherefore premises considered the petitioner respectfully requests that the court overturn the decisions of the court below and rule in favor of Trinity Lutheran Church. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we'll move back to uh, we'll put you guys on mute at Creekview. And uh, our friends in West Virginia, please take your microphone off mute. And you'll have five minutes whenever you're ready to begin. Yes. Thank you. Right. So with the, we didn't really hit the establishment clause a whole lot in our main argument, but so the establishment clause, uh, it, it's violated because if the money is given to the church, then that, uh, it would aid them. that it would aid the church and that is a strict, uh, it's, 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 yeah, it's the establishment of religion and that. This is a this is a religious school, though, counselor, um, not a church. And what we're talking about here is a is a playground. Um, and I, I'm struggling to see the religious aspect uh, of giving money to have you know nice uh, you know ground that's safe for the kids in a playground. Well, to, to address how it would uh, promote religion, um, it would give revenue to the school because uh, a lot of kids would m maybe it would be nicer for kids to go to that school if they had a nice playground in this impoverished area and so they would get revenue from that and it would also open up um 
uh, it would open up the opportunity for other churches or other um, religious schools around the nation to get that same, to draw from the same pool of money that all public schools are drawing from as well, allowing for less opportunity for public schools to get. Council, this is a very particular funding program. It's funding for a very particular thing with respect to uh, the way that the uh, ground in the playground uh, will be outfitted. Um, you know, this is not something that that's, you know, really going to make a, a huge difference, I think, in terms of, of decision making for schools. This is about creating a safe environment for children who are using a playground. Um, it, it could open like it could be a slippery slope though um with the precedent that it could set um wait, wait wait tell me tell me about the slippery slope uh well it, in future court cases um they would probably view this uh holly versus um trinity lutheran church and try to extend the boundaries of the real decision made today to include say other things not just playground not just um say they want a new roof next and they want um, better facilities. And so it could open up for churches to gain more from it. But do you think that as the as a state, you can draw those lines and say, you know, a playground where kids are playing, that's distinct from giving funding that would, you know, further the religious mission of the school, things that would ha help with the daily functioning of the religious aspects of the school? I mean, drawing those lines on your own? Um, so are you, are you saying that the like courts would have to make the decision of where to draw the lines? Or? Sure, courts could make the decision, but you know, you could make the decision ahead of time so you don't end up in court. Oh. Um, Oh, sure how to address that. Yeah. Council, you have a minute and a half left. If you'd like to wrap up and make a closing statement, you're welcome to do that. Yeah, go ahead. You don't need to answer my question. Maybe. Um, for the, uh, well, um, like the courts to uphold the previous decision made um, that the current Missouri Constitution and the decision that Sarah Pauli made is constitutional, and it follows the follows the Missouri um, Constitution, and it follows the. Establishment clause of the First Amendment without violation, um, and the, it it goes along with the intent, the original intent of the First Amendment. As well, and I think that's it. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, I am very grateful to both of you. Uh, both teams, I think, did a uh, 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 very well. You uh, uh, you restored my faith that the. Uh, uh, the next generation cares about the Constitution and cares about the Supreme Court and the rule of law, for that which I'm grateful. Uh, we will be announcing the winners on Monday. Uh, we have a couple more rounds to complete. And we look forward to uh, uh, hopefully maybe meeting one of you one day in Philadelphia. Uh, Julia, is there anything else you'd like to add? I just want to add my uh, thanks to, to both teams and my congratulations on a job well done. Um, you both clearly, uh, both teams clearly I uh, prepared for today's oral argument. And I would just say, if you're interested in continuing to learn about this uh, constitutional issue or any other, uh, that you continue to go to the Harlan Institute and Consource website, or you reach out to us directly if you have any specific questions. With that, I'll let us sign off. Thank you very much, Julie. Uh, uh, thank you both for your participation and have a wonderful day and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.